Ever since Lady Gaga first hit the scene, she's been known for her fashion almost as much as her chart-topping music. And she's kept people guessing with unique looks that often border on performance art. From poker face to stupid love and everything in between, these are the jaw-dropping looks of Lady Gaga. I want to give my fans everything that they deserve, and they do not deserve sweatpants and sneakers. Lady Gaga is a classically trained pianist who incorporated the instrument in her early performances as an exotic dancer in New York City. Wearing her hair long and natural brown, Gaga's outfits typically consisted of hot pants and stilettos. She told The Telegraph, It was on the New York underground that I found myself. This is the piano that she picked out. We couldn't afford it, and we paid it over several months, and this is the piano. And I'm very so. grateful. <laughs> yeah. This look followed both Gaga and pal Lady Starlight to Lollapalooza in 2007. Then in 2012, Gaga released rare pictures from her burlesque days that showed her in the look that was once described by BMI as the, quote, love child of David Bowie and Jerry Lee Lewis. The release of Gaga's first studio album, The Fame, in 2008 marked a major shift in her persona. Gone was the long brunette hair of her dancing days, and in its place were blonde wigs so platinum they were almost white. This would continue to be Gaga's signature hair for this era. The first music video from The Fame was Just Dance, in which she debuts her new blonde hair, but also a Ziggy Stardust-inspired eye. Over her skimpy outfits, the pop star wears 80s-style shoulder-padded jackets, as well as a plus of wild sunglasses so large they nearly cover her entire face. But it was the video for Poker Face that established Gaga's new role as fashion icon. With asymmetrical bodysuits and latex and leather defining her look, both in her videos and public appearances. By the time her first short film for paparazzi was released in 2009, this newly sculpted blonde bombshell look with a rock and roll edge immediately signaled Gaga. I'm my best when I feel good about me and when I feel comfortable 100% in my clothes and my body and what I'm wearing. When fame hit Gaga, it arrived fast, catapulting the singer-songwriter into the stardom for which she always felt she was destined. Her wild stylings during the fame era had created a similarly inspired fan base who weren't just copying Gaga's fashion, they were helping her develop it. We identify with one another. I see myself in my fans, and they see themselves in me. Because many of these fans felt marginalized in their own lives, they turned to Gaga's fearless self-expression for their own. This phenomenon quickly inspired the far edgier looks that came with the fame monster, an album that played on notions of outsider status. In the Bad Romance video, Gaga introduces her claw nails and sharper makeup. While her live performance looks drew from her burlesque roots, it's the Alejandro video that echoes back to Gaga's history on the small stage. Thanks to the lyrics for the songs Monster and Teeth, the pop star began referring to herself as Mother Monster, and to her most dedicated fans as Little Monsters. Her evolving fashion would follow in suit. For Gaga, as the realities of fame began to seep into her daily life, her style became more aggressive. She infamously performed a blood-soaked mashup of Poker Face and Paparazzi during the 2010 MTV VMAs and accepted her Video of the Year Moon Man for Bad Romance in an actual meat dress. The carnivorous couture was created from flank steak and sewn onto Gaga backstage. Gaga later discussed the meaning of the dress, telling Ellen, "...if we don't stand up for what we believe in and if we don't fight for our rights, pretty soon we're going to have as much rights as the meat on our bones. And I'm not a piece of meat." Since the dress caused a huge controversy among animal rights activists, Gaga explained that it was a critique of the military's anti-LGBTQ+, don't ask, don't tell policy. The moral and ethical and political implication of that outfit was far beyond what most people think, which is ill. Next came what some consider to be the pinnacle of Mother Monster's outsider look with the release of 2011's Born This Way. As Gaga and her little monsters embraced her narrative that monsters, or more precisely, people who are different, are beautiful in their own way, the pop star's outfits blazed the trails and became her edgiest yet. The short film Born This Way features Gaga embodying several different humanoid creatures. She has facial prosthetics, nail claws, and off-camera she was prone to wearing heelless platforms 
platform shoes that seemed to defy gravity. Gaga even appeared at the 2011 Grammy Awards in a huge plastic egg, only to hatch on stage later. The performance completed the narrative that Gaga and her little monsters are distinctly not from here. Rather, they are otherworldly creatures who don't just look different, they are different. I know what it is to really give yourself to your fans and let them control you while you're out there and let them let them dictate how hard you sweat." The message certainly resonated with fans. Even Elton John called Born This Way the, quote, new gay anthem per Entertainment Weekly. Gaga's meat dress might have been one of the most iconic looks of her fame monster era, but for the Born This Way years, it was the appearance of the singer's drag king alter ego, Joe Calderon, who first appears in the music video for You and I. In lieu of the mother monster as herself, Calderon appeared in person at the 2011 MTV Movie Awards, wearing his signature white t-shirt but paired with a black suit jacket and trousers. Calderon accepted the award for Best Female Video for Born This Way on Gaga's behalf half, never once breaking character during his acceptance speech, his performance, and his interviews. Calderon even went on to do a full photo shoot for the Vogue Japan Men's Edition. Joe Calderon was just one character in a long list of examples, proving that Gaga's far more than just a pop star. She's a performance artist who's unafraid to shatter the ceiling. Just two shows away from wrapping her Born This Way tour, Gaga was forced to cancel after breaking her hip. This accident, coupled with her fibromyalgia diagnosis, meant that she was going to have to take a break from the full-on kinetic performance experience that Little Monsters had come to expect. This hiatus also marked a new toned-down style, something that broke from the Mother Monsters looks that defined her until late 2013. Real fans probably knew deep down that there was something going on. Paranoia, fear, body pain. She's still often sported her signature blonde wig, in particular on the Art Pop album cover, but Gaga was slowly beginning to streamline her style as well as rocking a fresh face. While paying tribute to both her shifting looks and the new iteration of herself as a stylized clown in Art Pop's Applause video, Gaga's appearance for this third album era is at its peak in her short film video for Guy. As Gaga adjusted to her physical limitations concerning her health, she collaborated with music legend Tony Bennett on Cheek to Cheek, an album of classic duets they eventually took on the road. While every once in a while Gaga appeared in an outfit reflective of her past, her Cheek to Cheek era look embodied a classic old-school jazz diva vibe. Sequined caps and sparkling full-length dresses with plunging necklines became her signature costuming both on stage with Bennett as well as in her solo appearances. He sings out and it fills the whole theater and then he goes <laughs> yeah. These stylings included visual tributes to other female crooners like Barbara Streisand and Judy Garland, while bringing a small taste of Gaga's unique over-the-top wigs and other headwear. Long gone were the booty shorts. Vintage turbans, ball gowns, and swanky cocktail dresses were in. Explaining her about-face fashion turn, Gaga reportedly said at the time, via You Discover Music, "...it's me rebelling against my own pop music." After her tour with Tony Bennett, Gaga returned with arguably her most surprising look to date with the release of 2016's Joanne. Sporting cut-off jean shorts and a sports jersey, Gaga's first music video from the album Perfect Illusion features zero frills and a driving electro-pop beat. She also introduces the pink cowgirl hat that would become the signature look of this Gaga era, which focused more on reaching mainstream middle America. Variations on the cowgirl hat popped up during her subsequent Joanne tour, some in pastel pink, others bejeweled, and typically paired with cowboy boots of various colors and lots of fringe. Having mostly discarded the outrageous fashions that made her a household name, Gaga was invited to perform the halftime show for Super Bowl 51 in 2017. I've been planning this since I was four. <laughs> so <laughs> I know exactly what I'm gonna do." For the performance, her look paid mild, glittering homage to her entire catalog, even though it was far more modest than the Gaga of the previous decade would have ever been. What are you writing down in here? That's my songbook. I had this idea and I don't want to forget it. In 2018, Gaga made her proper Hollywood debut as the young ingenue Allie Main in Bradley Cooper's remake of the classic musical drama A Star Is Born. In many ways, Allie's appearance in the film is an even more stripped-down version of Gaga's Joanne-era look, as the character initially wears nothing but a touch of foundation, complete with a wardrobe consisting mainly of t-shirts, jeans, and a cowboy hat. I always wanted to define what it meant to be me, 
and I always had something to say and I always made sure that no one stood in my way when I wanted to say it. Off screen, however, the pop star turned actress brought old Hollywood glamour back with a vengeance throughout the press tour for the film. The key styles for this particular look were vintage-inspired ball gowns and satin, along with sequins, feathers, and yards of tulle. Gaga's makeup channeled Elizabeth Taylor's iconic cat eyeliner, as well as shimmering lip glosses and classic pinks and reds that were dramatic in a completely different way than her original poker face and bad romance looks. But of course, Gaga can pull off old Hollywood style. That's because she can work any look. The star's official makeup artist, Sarah Tano, revealed to Vogue, I think Gaga is a total chameleon. Everything and anything could suit her. When Gaga got her first tattoo at just 17 years old, her father was furious and made her promise to only get tattoos on her left side so she would still be, quote, slightly normal on the other side, according to Rolling Stone. One particular tattoo, a treble clef on her lower back, was later covered up with a flowery rose and vine after the original upset her parents. In 2009, she got a quote from Rilke's letter to a young poet on the inside of her left arm. However, breaking her promise, Gaga then got her first tattoo on her right side, a trumpet drawn by Tony Bennett just before they released Cheek to Cheek. I wanted the symbol of our unity, the symbol of our love, of our community, and everything we stand for. Adding to her collection are tributes to her little monsters. Two words underneath her Rilke tattoo feature the lettering Mother Monster, plus a monster claw on her left shoulder blade. In addition to a heart on her shoulder in tribute to her dad and the date 12 1874 in remembrance of her deceased Aunt Joanne, Gaga has David Bowie's face tattooed on her rib cage, as well as a tribute tattoo for every project on which she's worked. I get to do my, you know, pop rock interesting performance art show. In December 2019, Gaga began a two-part residency in Las Vegas called Enigma, marking the culmination of not just her musical career to date, but also a tribute to virtually every single look she sported since the fame. Her show has since been lauded for many aspects of its production, but Billboard made a point of mentioning the Mother Monster's various looks, specifically noting, with her longtime fashion collaborator Nicola Formichetti and her sister Natalie Germanotta joining for Forces, the duo spawned a number of creative looks, ranging from fluorescent and leather to a bodysuit with flashing LED lights, for Gaga, the dancers, and her band that would have made David Bowie proud. Gaga considers Bowie to be the kind of artist who, quote, changes you forever, as she told NPR, so it's no wonder she would want to pay homage to the late musician. From the Bowie-inspired lightning bolt of the fame era and the leather and lace from Born This Way to her performance of the Oscar-winning tune Shallow as her A Star Is Born character. Character Ali Main, Gaga's costume changes during Enigma also spoke to her myriad contributions, not just to pop culture, but also to cutting edge fashion. Gaga's arc as a singer, songwriter, dancer, and performance artist has been huge, and her fans wondered what she would do after she'd basically done it all. But she finally answered the question when she returned to her pure pop roots with 2020's Stupid Love. In the music video for the single off her album Chromatica, Gaga personifies bubblegum pop music with all pink ensembles that call back to her fame monster and Born This Way looks, featuring extraterrestrial and outer space imagery as well as the tiny spandex outfits that one to find her brand. Gaga's pink ponytail and sparkling facial adornments are reminiscent of her earlier days, and she appeared to be having a blast while filming as she pranced around the desert, showing off the bright and quirky fashion elements we once expected from her on the regular. But unlike the past, Gaga sports a pair of walkable metallic magenta boots in the video instead of gravity-defying high heels. The irony is that now that she's charting a new interstellar pop narrative, her feet are firmly on the ground. I mean, I love my clothes, I put them on, but you're not going to tell me when to wear them. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.